The letter to Titus appears in the Christmas liturgy in the readings of the Mass at midnight and at dawn. The letter to Titus was written towards the end of the first century, most likely by a disciple of St. Paul in his memory and name. Titus, the recipient of the letter, was a leader in the early Christian communities of the island of Crete in the Mediterranean Sea. Titus was charged to provide the stable leadership for the churches and above all, had to lead by example. While the organizational chart of the church was still being under construction, the author, St. Paul, or a disciple of him, expects excellent moral behavior from every Christian as they await for the second appearance of Christ. After we Christians experienced the first appearance of Christ in the flesh, that is, the incarnation, Christmas, the passion, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, we must strive for excellent moral behavior until he comes again. And this is the very challenge of the letter. As I do the complete reading of the letter to Titus, I am using the New American Bible. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Chapter 1. Paul, a slave of God and apostle of Jesus Christ for the sake of the faith of God's chosen ones and the recognition of religious truth in the hope of eternal life that God, who does not lie, promised before time began, who indeed at the proper time revealed his word in the proclamation with which I was entrusted by the command of God our Savior, to Titus, my true child in our common faith grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. For this reason I left you in Crete, so that you might set right what remains to be done and appoint presbyters in every town as I directed you, on condition that a man be blameless, married only once, with believing children, who are not accused of licentiousness or rebellious. For a bishop, as God's steward, must be blameless, not arrogant, not irritable, not a drunkard, not aggressive, not greedy for sordid gain, but hospitable, a lover of goodness, temperate, just, holy, and self-controlled, holding fast to the true message as taught, so that he will be able both to exhort with sound doctrine and to refute opponents. For there are also many rebels, idol takers and deceivers, especially the Jewish Christians. It is imperative to silence them, as they are upsetting whole families by teaching for sordid gain what they should not. One of them, a prophet of their own, once said, Cretans have always been liars, vicious beasts, and lazy gluttons. That testimony is true. Therefore, admonish them sharply, so that they may be sound in the faith, instead of paying attention to Jewish myths and regulations of people who have repudiated the truth. To the clean, all things are clean, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is clean. In fact, both their minds and their consciences are tainted. They claim to know God but by their deeds they deny him. They are vile and disobedient and unqualified for any good deed. That was chapter one. Chapter two, letter to Titus. As for yourself, you must say what is consistent with sound doctrine, namely, that older men should be temperate, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, love, and endurance. Similarly, older women should be reverent in their behavior, not slanderers, not addicted to drink, teaching what is good, so that they may train younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, chaste, good homemakers, under the control of their husbands, 
so that the word of God may not be discredited. Urge the younger men, similarly, to control themselves, showing yourself as a model of good deeds in every respect, with integrity in your teaching, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be criticized, so that the opponent will be put to shame without anything bad to say about us. Slaves are to be under the control of their masters in all respects, giving them satisfaction, not taking, not talking back to them or stealing from them, but exhibiting complete good faith so as to adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in every way. For the grace of God has appeared, saving all, and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. Say these things, exhort and correct with all authority. Let no one look down on you. That was chapter 2. Chapter 3, Letter to Titus Remind them to be under the control of magistrates and authorities, to be obedient, to be open to every good enterprise. They are to slander no one, to be peaceable, considerate, exercising all graciousness toward everyone. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, deluded, slaves to various desires and pleasures living in malice and envy, hateful ourselves and hating one another. But when the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. This saying is trustworthy. I want you to insist on these points, so that those who have believed in God be careful to devote themselves to good works. These are excellent and beneficial to others. Avoid foolish arguments, genealogies, rivalries, and quarrels about the law, for they are useless and futile. After a first and second warning, break off contact with a heretic, realizing that such a person is perverted and sinful and stands self-condemned. When I sent Artemis to you, or Tyricus, try to join me at Nicopolis, where I have decided to spend the winter. Send Zenas, the lawyer, and Apollos on their journey soon and see to it that they have everything they need. But let our people too learn to devote themselves to good works, to supply urgent needs, so that they may not be unproductive. All who are with me send you greetings. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with all of you. Paul. End of the letter to Titus.